Welcome back to another edition of the Well and Good Podcast, where we talk about stuff that has to do with wellness, goodness, and what falls under that umbrella. Well, wellness would be health, nutrition, exercise, good stuff like that, Um, mindfulness perhaps. We've talked about meditation, uh, acupuncture, all kinds of stuff. And under the heading of goodness would be nonprofits, charities, creativity, Uh, essentially trying to put some positivity back out into the world. Today, my guest is Kristen Vanagro from Richmond's Habitat Humanity, the Richmond chapter, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, Kristen comes on and talks about Habitat's mission, uh, plans for the future, how you can get involved, some of the builds that they're involved with, all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, thanks to Kristen for coming in. Let's get right to that. I present Kristen Vanagro from Habitat for Humanity on today's Well and Good podcast. All right, so here we are with uh, Kristen Vanagro from Habitat for Humanity. Kristen, thanks so much for coming in. Absolutely, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, this is this is really cool. I've been to Habitat several times. I haven't been on a build yet. That would be cool, and I'll get you to describe what that's yeah, all about. We will definitely get you out on a build. That all would right, be so awesome. Cool and. Uh, I've been there as a member of a group called Synapse, and they meet there, and um, a bunch of people can attend within that uh, within that community. And I've, of course, had heard of Habitat for Humanity. Pretty much everybody has. It's one of the one of the really well known nonprofits that you hear about. But I really had no idea how much you guys do over there. Um, so we'll get into the, some of that as well. Uh, first of all, the website for the whole umbrella organization is habitat.org and the richmond metro habitat for humanity has a longer url which i will put on the well and good podcast episode but uh, why don't we start out by just kind of describing the mission of habitat for humanity and then we'll get into some more detail as as uh, as far as what you guys do around the world locally programs for women vets and stuff like that so first of all yeah the the overarching mission absolutely so um we are Habitat affiliate here in Richmond. We serve um, the city of Richmond, Henrico, and Chesterfield counties. So that's our service area. Um, there's 1,500 affiliates across the United States, and um, we also do work in 70 countries across the world. So we're everywhere, you can imagine. Um, so our affiliate just specifically focuses on the Richmond area here. Um, and what we do is we build safe, affordable homes um, for local families, and we use mostly volunteers to help us build those homes. Um, We have over 3,000 volunteers that we use annually that come out on one of our construction sites and help us to do everything from, you know, building the foundation to putting down the flooring to painting. Um, Pretty much anything you think of that can go into building a home, our volunteers come out and they, they get to do that. Um, Our homeowners, they earn less than it takes to qualify for a traditional mortgage. So through us, they qualify for an affordable 0% interest mortgage. Um, the average monthly payment's about $600 a month, which is way cheaper than the average rent in the Richmond area. And it allows them to achieve that dream of homeownership where they wouldn't be able to otherwise. How do you get somebody into a 0% loan um, and make it so affordable? Do you have corporate partners, banking partners, stuff like we that? We are actually the bank. Okay. Um, ourselves. So we're we're kind of a little bit complex because we're a construction company, but we're also a bank and then we're also a community service organization and we have a retail operation. So we're a little bit of everything, which is kind of cool. Um, but be- since we hold those mortgages, um, we are able to do the 0% interest on them. Um, and we also have a really great partnership with uh, VHDA, the Virginia Housing Development Authority. They um, service all of our mortgages for free, which um, really saves us basically a full-time staff person. Um, And they do that for habitats all over the state of Virginia, which is really amazing. Cool. Um, Well, as far as the builds, it sounds kind of daunting, especially for someone like me, I guess, who's never been on a build. But um, what do you what do you have to have? What do you have to know to get on it? You know, because construction is no no small deal. You know, do do they have you guys have experts on site and kind of 
dole out the jobs accordingly? How does how does it work? What do you exactly. have to exactly? Yeah. By? So we um, you don't have to have any skills whatsoever to come out and build on one of our build sites. Um, they even let me out there sometimes, <laughs> every once in a while. Um, we have three um, really amazing site supervisors. Um, they are con- skilled construction workers. They um, could build a house by themselves, but they are so amazing that they're able to take a new group of volunteers every single day and teach them what they need to do to be able to build a house. Um, so you know, most of our volunteers come from either a corporation or they're just individuals interested in giving back. They might come from a faith organization, um, and they've never done anything construction-wise. Um, so we have all of the tools that they would need. We um, show them how to safely use all those tools and make sure that they um, know how to properly use everything and have all the safety equipment that they need. Um, and then they get to learn new skills, too, while they're out on site, which is really amazing. I was going to ask you about that next. Um, I imagine there's some pretty cool skills that will translate, especially when it comes to some of your programs, like helping women specifically, women mm-hmm. and children and veterans. Do you encourage Women and children and veterans, I only use that example because you have programs specifically built around helping them to come out to learn those transferable skills. Yeah, absolutely. So all of our homeowners, they're actually required to do 350 hours of what we call sweat equity, which is volunteer time. Mm -hmm. So they're helping to build their home and then the homes of other Habitat for Humanity um, homeowners. Um, We also have something called Women Build um, that we do. So once a year, we... Um, designate one house that is only going to utilize female volunteers. So it really encourages women to come out, learn new skills, and then um, help to build a home. And they actually do all of the fundraising for the home as well. So it's really such a cool program to say that all these women, hundreds of women are coming out, raising money to build a house for a local family, usually for a single mom. So they're helping to support another woman. And then um, they're doing all the volunteer labor that it takes to build that house as well. Um, We do have a veterans homeownership program, too, um, called Habitat for Heroes. And um, we actually have a homeowner right now. Her name is Stephanie, and she is a veteran of the Army. Um, And we will be finishing up her home in the next few weeks, um, which is exciting. And we try to... um, Typically on the veteran builds, we'll try to get other veterans to come out and volunteer on the site too. Um, But so many of the things that you can do on site are things that you can use in your home too. Um, You know, if you're putting down flooring, you know, if you have a piece that you need to replace, you kind of feel a little bit more confident in doing that. No, absolutely. And uh, a lot of people probably would not realize, although it kind of makes sense that women and children are most likely to be affected by poor living conditions. Yeah. Uh, so a program like Women Build, super helpful, especially to you know women and children, and also giving them transferable skills will, will come in handy, hopefully. Absolutely. Yeah, t- um, with children, it's a little bit more difficult for us because you do have to be at least 16 to be on our construction sites. Um, OSHA guidelines, you know, you can't do certain activities with um folks who are too young. But we do try to have youth activities throughout the year um, where we'll teach them a little bit about habitat, you know, maybe do some smaller projects like landscaping. Um, We have a Lego blitz build every year where kids build houses out of Legos and they get to learn about habitat and the importance of of home ownership. I'll have to uh, get my nephew on that. He's going to be a little engineer. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) He loves Legos. How many people, I would imagine there's a certain liability in having a bunch of people on a construction site. How many people can you have on one build or or how is it determined? Yeah, so we always have um, three builds going on at a time. And typically we utilize between six and ten volunteers each day. Um, Because like you said, if we have too large of a group, then it kind of becomes unmanageable and isn't – as helpful as it would be if we had a more a sm- a much Diminishing smaller Diminishing returns, as it exactly. were. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and especially, we wish we could clone our site supervisors, but we really only have one of them mm-hmm. on each site. So um, it needs to be kind of a more manageable group. Um, but like I said, we utilize over 3,000 local volunteers every single year. So we're putting people in Richmond to work, which is really awesome. You say you have three builds going on at once? Yes. Um, are they all in the same area in Richmond? Because I know there's an area over off of, uh, what is it, Texas Avenue? Yeah. So um, we ha- we are right now 
a big focus is definitely doing a lot of um, rehabs in like the Maymont Randolph neighborhood. We acquired a bunch of properties from the housing authority um, that had been sitting vacant for over a decade. Um, So for us, that's really great because that's, you know, affordable properties that we can acquire um, and then turn into affordable housing. But it's also helping to revitalize that neighborhood. Um, and the neighbors are so excited that these houses that have just been sitting boarded up for years are getting put back into use um, and that there's families living the, in them. And um, it's bringing a lot of joy and beautification to the neighborhood, which is great. Um, but really, it depends on where we get those properties. Um, that's a big challenge for us, especially in the counties, is getting affordable properties that we can um, re- revitalize into affordable housing. How do you find them? We are really lucky in the city um, to have a lot of partnerships. It's much easier to get property in the city. Um, We had a bill passed a few years ago where um, nonprofits can acquire extremely tax-delinquent properties um, from the city. We were actually the lead nonprofit on that bill, which was exciting. And it was signed into law in one of our homes that was being built. Oh, nice. Um, So that's been a really great resource for us. Um, And then, as I said, the Housing Authority has had a lot of properties lately that they've been trying to get off of their books. So they've been um, donating them to local nonprofits to um, revitalize into affordable housing. It's way harder in the counties. um, And we're actually thinking about starting um, an opportunity fund that's going to help us to raise money so that we can put some money towards acquiring properties in the counties. Um, Because a lot of our homeowners want to be, you know, in Chesterfield, in Henrico. um, But if we don't have the properties, we can't build there. So Mm -hmm. um, does anybody ever leave you a house? You know how people will... um or donate a, a whole house, like people will donate an old car or something like that. Has that ever happened? Yeah, that happens all the time, actually, yeah. which is really amazing. Whenever we get those phone calls, we jump for joy. So um, that's cool. We, yeah, we've had a lot of individuals who've done that. Some businesses will do that too. Um, we had a local bank who had a lot of um, properties that they had. Um, they wanted to get rid of, and they donated some of those properties to us. So we seem to find them somehow, but um, we're trying to develop a more strategic strategy now for how we acquire those properties. How about this show doesn't have sponsors, by the way, but how yeah. about uh, corporate partners like Lowe's? I know you guys work with Lowe's a lot. How important are they? Uh, and this is coming from genuinely a curiosity standpoint, because I imagine you You couldn't be just buying all the materials yourself at retail value. That just wouldn't work. Yeah, definitely not. We are really lucky because we have such a great name brand and people know us around the country, around the world. Um, We have a lot of corporate partners nationally that donate to all the local um, Habitat affiliates as well. Um, So places like Dow, they'll... um, donate all of our insulation to us. Valspar donates all the paint to us um, for our homes, which really helps to cut back on the cost of um, materials. Uh, We are also very lucky to have a lot of local businesses that are super, super generous and that um, give us large amount of money every year to help build houses. And then they also send out volunteers to help build the houses too. Um, places like Capital One, Bank of America. Yeah, a lot of those places require that their employees do a certain amount of volunteer work. Exactly, exactly, which is really wonderful for the nonprofit community. We have such a vibrant nonprofit community, and it's great that the businesses are really backing that up and um, making sure that we're successful. You guys recently had a, a change in the office, though, really, uh, 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 correct? A, a change of uh, leadership? We did. We just um, hired a new CEO, our our longtime CEO, Jane Helfrich. She um, just retired, and she's uh, gallivanting across the country <laughs> on a cross-country road trip with her new um, RV, which is really fun to keep up with. Um, but we hired Mary Kay Huss, who um, is formerly with Rebuilding Together Richmond. She's been in the housing nonprofit world for years and years and years, and she is going to do such great things with us. I uh, have been talking to Joy Whitehurst over there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to help her out with some sound equipment. But I know that um, you guys have a number of events as well, I guess, fundraisers and awareness. 
uh, which also tie into what we were talking about, uh, engagement with veterans. But um, as we were talking before it started, uh, a local artist named Kyle Davis, I know, is uh, interested in working with you guys. Do you do a lot of events like that with local, say, artists and organizations just to kind of get the word out? Or or do you, say, marry them with... Uh, we just finished a house event type of thing. What, what kind of events do you guys yeah, have? Yeah, we, we do a lot of different types of events. Um, we're, we pride ourselves on being a pretty fun nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we try to you know, be out in the community as much as possible. Um, we At the end of every single build, we have a home dedication. And that's one of my favorite parts of, of my job is getting to plan those. Basically, we invite everyone who's had a part in building a house um, together to celebrate the homeowner and her or his um, journey towards homeownership. Um, we invite all the volunteers, sponsors, pretty much anybody that would have been involved. And then we get to have like a little party and celebration for them at their house and get to see the oh, finished Oh, that's got to feel good. Exactly. It's really wonderful. Nobody, I mean, there's always tears, which is pretty amazing. Um, and every single one is different, but every single one is special. So it's been really great. Um, you mentioned some of the work and, and visibility around the world. What, what's some stuff that is going on in other parts of the country? Um, and I looked into some of it on the website, and it's amazing, like advocacy for home ownership in Brazil and yeah. things like that. Maybe touch on a couple of those. Yeah. Well, one um, big thing that we're getting ready to start um, at Habitats all across the world is an advocacy campaign called Cost of Home. So basically, all of the Habitat affiliates um, around the world are going to come together and really kind of show what the problem is with affordable housing in, in, in the country and across the world, and then um, put a personal touch to it, and then develop um, some ideas for how we can fix that. Um, and it's going to focus on a couple different areas, um, things like land use and changing um, the use of land so that there's more properties available for affordable housing organizations, um, more equitable access to credit. That's another big yeah. part of it. Um, changing or finding ways to develop more opportunity in different areas. Um, so that could be like, in, for example, in Churchill, the market just opened. That gives a large opportunity to a place that didn't have access to you know, a grocery store before that. Um, so just kind of working with local governments and then also thinking on the federal level for how we can make change and um, incorporate affordable housing into different policies that are put into place. Um, now, let's say people already have a home that they um, they own. Maybe it's through you guys or, or someone else. But uh, specifically, I'm getting to your home preservation program. Mm-hmm. That seems kind of confusing, but you, when you read into it, families partner with Habitat based on income need and willingness to help. Kind of go into the details of that a little bit. That's a little bit harder to explain, but it looks really cool. Yeah. So um, here in Richmond, we call it um, a critical home repair program, um, it's, but it's the same thing as the home preservation program. Um, what we do is we partner typically with local governments on this. Um, so we really have done a lot in Chesterfield County, and we're getting ready to do some in the city of Richmond, too, where um, we identify neighborhoods where there are folks who own a home, but they don't have the funding to be able to make important health and safety repairs to those homes. So we have them apply, um, and then we assess what their what their needs would be, and then we go into their homes and make those repairs. Um, because really, it's so important to have a healthy, safe, um, and affordable place to call home. And a lot of people are cost burdened when it comes to paying for their housing and they can't afford to buy a new roof. Or... Yeah, living in fear of anything breaking. Or... Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, and a lot of those folks are, you know, senior citizens or people with disabilities who really, really need that assistance. Um, and we get so many calls every week for people looking for that. So we are glad that we're able to provide that service and we hope to be able to increase that over the next few years. Um, what are some other ways people can get involved? But obviously, they can volunteer mm-hmm. or donate money. We talked about the home uh, home donation and stuff like that. Other ways they can get involved, whether it's 
I don't know, materials or cars or anything? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think I mentioned at the beginning earlier, we actually have two retail um, operations called the Richmond Habitat Restore. Um, it's kind of like a thrift store, Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, so we sell new and used building materials, home decor, um, furniture, all kinds of different great things. And um, we are always looking for people to donate items to those stores, um, especially, you know, nice furniture, nice building materials, um, things that our customers would be really interested in. We're also always looking for shoppers. It's a really, really awesome place to shop. I've basically furnished my entire house um, from the ReStore, which is really great. So you're saving money on what you're um, using to decorate your house or to do maintenance repairs to your house, but you're also helping to, um, you know, give that money to a nonprofit that's doing good in the community. I got this off your uh, frequently asked questions and hadn't even thought about it. How does Habitat for Humanity work with the government? With the government, um, so we have done, um, I think I talked a little bit about, um, we've helped to do some advocacy and make some policy changes, which have really helped our organization than other nonprofits as well. Um, we also get some funding from local governments, and we really work with them to figure out what they think their need is for housing, and then um, tell them what we think the need is for housing, and then we figure out together um, a strategy for how we can use that funding the best, um, the best way possible. Um, we mostly work, like I said, with the city of Richmond and Chesterfield, and their local governments have been really great to us. This might be a weird question. Do you, how are housing markets? Uh, how, how do how do different say up an up market right right now? Mm -hmm. Demand is so high. Absolutely. Um, but in a down market, it might be different. How do the housing markets and fluctuations affect you guys? Um, I think. For us, they don't really affect us too, mm -hmm. too much other than, you know, acquiring property. That's that's always a big the, our biggest concern. You know, if right now we're in an up market mm -hmm. and so property is much more expensive. Um, so if we had to pay for property, that would make things really difficult. Luckily, right now we have an influx of property that's been affordable for us to acquire. Um, but our homeowners... Like I said, they wouldn't qualify for a traditional mortgage. So I think that because our program is so different than other housing programs, um, it doesn't really affect the number of homeowners or people applying to be in our program, mm -hmm. which has been great. Cool. Uh, what else can we hit here? Where can we direct people if they want to uh, volunteer or help or get involved here locally? Um, well, nationally even, but um, more likely locally. Yeah. yeah. So um, our website is richmondhabitat.org. And at the top of our website, we actually have a giant blue volunteer button. So if you click on that, you can see all of the different opportunities that are available. Um, we have a calendar where you can actually sign up directly on our website, which makes it really easy. Um, we also can accommodate groups to come out and volunteer, but you would have to get in touch with our director of community engagement. Her name is Whitney Guthrie, and she um, can help to set up those specialized days as well. Boy, that uh, URL is a lot easier than the one I had. I think I got it from the national site, oh, which, really? which is like habitat.org slash US dash VA slash Richmond slash. <laughs> oh, that's probably like our landing page on the habitat.org like website. The, the actual URL as opposed to the redirect. Exactly. Here it is. Yeah. There's all kinds of good information there. Cool. Uh, anything else we need to hit that I have missed? I There's so much on the website. I tried to... Uh, do a lot of research and then I got ended up going down the rabbit hole, you know. Yeah. So much oh going yeah. On. It's such a it's really such a wonderful organization to work for. I love it. No day is ever the same. And um, I think it's just such a great brand and such a great mission that it's just really fun to work for. Have you ever met Jimmy Carter? I know he's I <laughs> haven't. I, I did um so I went to the national conference a couple years ago and he spoke. Um, oh cool. So I got to see him from afar, but I didn't get to meet him in person, unfortunately. Um, apparently, the Property Brothers were at this year's conference, but oh, I wasn't wow. there, and so I didn't get to see the Property Brothers. But um, one other cool thing that we yeah. do um, with Habitat and you know the national organization is that we've gotten to take global village trips, um, which is where you get to actually go abroad to another country and work with another Habitat affiliate, and you get to really see how Habitat works across the world and how, 
you know, we might live in different countries, but we're all doing the same thing and working for the same mission. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to go to Cambodia uh, two years ago, and it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever gotten to to have. It was really awesome. We built a house for a family. Um, It was a mom and a dad, their two children, and then their grandchildren, and they all lived in one house. Um, and How long did that take? It was. We were there for a week, and we built a house within a week. You know, it's a very different house than we're used to. Um, it's not quite so fancy, but um, huh. it was much safer, drier than the the house that they were currently living in. Um, it was definitely a different building experience because the wood over there is so thick. It was just so oh, hard yeah. to hammer the nails in. Um, so we had to, we were working with a local construction worker and every time we tried to hammer a nail in, we'd be like, Chai, can you come, can you come? I, I bent my nail again. <laughs> exactly. It was really warm too. So the nails were kind of like bend. Um, but it was just such a great experience. We got to know a lot of people that lived in the village. Um, we had a big celebration at the end with everyone from the village and the family, um, that we built a home for and, um, Got to try some of their traditional dishes oh, and man, play some games. Cool. And yeah. yeah, it was really fun. And then part of your trip, too, is you get to learn about the culture. So we got to go to um, see some temples over there, um, Angkor Wat, which is a huge temple complex. Um, we got to uh, go to like this beautiful waterfall at one point and go see a floating village. And oh, that sounds it was, incredible. It was amazing. It was I got awesome. to see Ha Long Bay in Vietnam oh, one yeah. time, speaking of floating vig- village, but never anything like that. Yeah. Um, well, but that was pretty amazing in its own right, but that sounds incredible. How long does it take to build a house through Habitat for Humanity here in the States? Yeah, through Habitat um, at our affiliate, if it's a rehab, it usually takes between three and four months. Um, for a new build, it probably takes a little bit closer to six months okay. um, when you're working from the ground up. I imagine your supervisors, your experts on site have to be incredibly patient, even though everybody means well, I'm sure, yeah. you know, starting out with a bunch of newbies, that would probably be pretty challenging. Oh, yeah. They're some of the most amazing people I've ever met. They um, are so skilled and just so great at their jobs, but they're also like part-time comedians too. So, <laughs> you know, everything they do, they do it with a smile and a joke and it just makes it so much fun. You know, if you mess something up, they're it just rolls off their back and they're like, that's okay, we'll fix it. You know what might be cool sometimes? I'll come out with a um, recorder and get some live sound and let people know kind of the, the camaraderie and the spirit that goes on at one of these builds. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would cool. be great. Well, Kristen, I appreciate you being here. I'm glad to uh, have met you and, and hooked up and, and gotten to know more about the mission of Habitat. It's like you said, it's one of the more fun nonprofits because – you're you're sweating, you're working, you're helping people, you're giving back, and the community and the and the fellowship, I imagine, is just incredible. Exactly. Then you get to go have a beer after. It's oh, great. can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of corporate sponsorships or, or partnerships, maybe you guys get a, a brewery on board somewhere. We actually <laughs> are. Um, we're doing a house that beer built. We're having. Oh, I saw a bunch about of that. local breweries come together, and they're going to um, work together to build a house, which is great. So we have our kickoff off event um, July thirteenth. In Scott's edition, it's going to be like a beer oh, tasting event. That's so. appropriate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, cool. Kristen Vinagro uh, from Habitat for Humanity, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. This was awesome. Come back sometime. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Thanks again to Kristen for coming in, and my name is Jay Smack. This has been another edition of the Well and Good Podcast. If you have any thoughts or ideas, feel free to hit me up. You can email me directly, smackj at gmail.com. You can also uh, email wellandgoodpodcast at gmail.com. If you have any show ideas, any feedback, any links, any events, um, actually, that is something that I've been meaning to do. All the information to contact our guests is on the website, wellandgoodpodcast.com. But I'm going to put up a links page so that anybody can get in on the goodness, as it were, uh, and send in links and events. And we want to try to create not necessarily a community, but embrace the community at large in an effort to put some positivity back out into the world. So. 
Thanks very much for listening. Please, if you like this, go to iTunes and or Spotify, both if you like. I'll leave a, a review on iTunes that helps spread the word. And once again, if you have any feedback or have anything you'd like to discuss right here on the Well and Good podcast, which also goes mobile, by the way. So don't think that uh, you have to rearrange your schedule too much if you want to come in and uh, talk about some wellness slash goodness stuff. I can come to you as well. And that's always fun when we hit the road. So. Once more, uh, hit me up with any feedback. All information can be found at thewellandgoodpodcast.com. And thanks a lot for listening. Till next time, uh, be well.